Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. So today, I wanted to show a new um, device I bought, and I will share this with you. Until recently, I was unaware that this existed, and I saw one of these on Mr. Carlson's lab. Of course, the one he has is huge and uh, very expensive. This is not nearly as huge or expensive as the one he has. This is a DC electronic load. So this is the ETS 5410A. I got this uh, off of Amazon. This is not a sponsored video. I bought this myself. And this has several functions that it'll do. It will do a battery testing. You can download the software and hook it to the computer and perform battery tests, similar to what you can do with the CBA5. So this does the battery testing. This also will be a load. So you can use this to test power supplies. This particular unit is rated, uh, as you can see, zero to 150 volts, zero to 40 amps, and up to 400 watts. For example, when testing a ham power supply at 13.8 volts, you're only gonna get about 26 to 28 watts, or 28 amps, excuse me, before you push against that 400 watt load. So to get the maximum amps, you're gonna take 400 watts divided by 13.8, and that'll give you the total number of amps that this can, uh, this can provide as a load. And when I say a load, this is in replacement of your radio or whatever device you're trying to power. So the, the most straightforward use is going to be a power supply. Recently, and you know I've released a couple videos on my, my tra travails fixing my Astron power supply. I did not have this at the time. So it was kind of problematic to uh, load up the power supply and test it under load. I could get voltage, but voltage does not necessarily indicate what the load is capable of. So that is what this device will do. There are a number of these on Amazon. This one had good reviews. This had four and a half, five stars. That's why I got this one. There are, you know, other brands, other models. Um, Again, the, the more current and amperage that the unit can handle, the price goes up commensurately. So this is, this is fine for a hobbyist. Is this going to load up a 50 amp Astron linear? No, not even going to come close. Because uh, 50 amps at 13.8 volts is six or 700 watts, 800 watts. I can't math that much. And this doesn't go that high. But this will tell you if your power supply can handle the average amateur radio, for example, and bonus for about the cost of the CBA5 battery tester, this is also a battery tester. So what we're gonna do is get this thing plugged in real quick, set up a small cheap power supply I have here, and we'll see if we can uh, load it up and hopefully not let the smoke out. And it does support remote operation via a USB host cable, and then this dingus back here which you can use for RS-488 and RS-232 connectivity if you've got this hooked to something that supports that kind of connectivity. In true FEP Labs radio fashion, let's plug this thing in with a switching power supply I have and run some load through it and see if everything works. Okay, we're back in the shack now with the power supply set up over here in the small window, you can see our RNL power supply, and then this is our DC load. This is the software up here on the, on the screen. This requires the CH340 or 341 comm drivers. I'll put a link to those below. You can get those from multiple sites on the internet. I got mine from SparkFun. I've used other devices on this channel that have required the CH340 drivers. You will need them to talk to this device. This requires the USB-A to host cable. Host is the little ob kind of square one and then a regular USB-A connector. Doesn't matter whether it's USB 2 or 3, whatever, it'll work fine. You're only doing serial connections. We've got our COM initialized. You can tell we're good because we have the model number, serial number, hardware and software versions down here in the bottom of our screen. The driver is critical to this. You may need to play with uninstalling and reinstalling. I had to, I don't know what's going on with that. That could be Windows, that could be anything. 
So we now have communications to the device and we're going to do a constant current test. And what you should see in the camera here, over here in the corner, is this is the amp gauge on the RNL power supply. And then this is the obviously the front screen of the DC load. This is going to mirror what we're going to see on the screen here. So we're going to turn this on by turning on channel one. And you can see we're now pulling one amp. I have these shortcuts over here that you can edit and set these to any values you want. So you don't have to dial. I can also dial by moving the knob up here. And as you can see, that's changing our load and you see the meter going up right here. We'll set that back to one amp. You can also come over here and on this keypad like thing, uh, you click a value here. Let's go to 3.2 and click enter. And that sets our current to 3.2 amps. Now the software, you know, it's a little sketch because this is amperage. This is not voltage. And you can see our 3.2 changed amperage. Once you have the COM port driver squared away, then there's a number of tests you can do with this device. You have, let's uh, turn this off for the moment. So you have over here, these tabs on the right side and you can set files to save things. Uh, let's call that a battery save text and click that on. So now theoretically, when we do a battery test, we should be able to see uh, output. You can do a list test, which we're not going to do. But what this allows you to do is set up parameters, voltage, current, time, and then pass fail parameters for whether this particular piece of the test failed. So I can modify the current or the voltage in some combination and test a load under those different combinations of voltage and current and then save the results off so I can go back and, and look at them. And this would be something like on your power supply, you have 13.8 volts and then you try it for 10 minutes at one amp and 10 minutes at two amps and 10 minutes at three amps, yada, yada, yada kind of thing. And the software will drive the load programmatically to do the testing. We're not going to do a list test. It does the same thing as the other things we're going to do. And then we have our battery test, which we'll do. And this allows you to hook up a battery and then set conditions, whether we want to do a constant current or a constant resistance test and force our load to use current and voltage values that we've set uh, for cutoff, as well as how much current it's going to draw during the test. This will show us our particular uh, time of the test and then the capacity that we've used off the battery during that test. And that's cumulative until you reset it. Uh, we can set stop parameters here so that if the amp hours uh, being used exceed or fall below a certain level, then it will, it will stop the test for us automatically. And then these also have voltage cutoffs uh, on all these conditions so that if the voltage of the battery drops below a certain point, then the test will stop. And when I said capacity, when we've tested 20 amp hours or if we tested 30 amp hours, so the test will run. And when we've used that amount of amp hours, that's when the test will stop for this parameter. And we're not going to do that. We, we will test the battery. So these are just some shortcuts. There's several variations of tests that change current and voltage, power, so on and so forth. We're not going to go through all the time tests because as I said, they're variations of current and or battery tests. And that would make this video entirely too long. So we're set on constant current. You saw that. Let's turn the test back on. We can use our shortcuts over here and I can click that and we'll jump to five amps. You can see down here in the corner, our gauge has jumped up to five. The amperage is on this bottom scale. And then you can see our DC load matches that value, which is what is on the screen. We can run it up to 10 amps. You'll hear the fan kick on. And we are pulling 10 amps and our meter on the RNL device says 10 amps. It also shows that our voltage is 13.12, which has dropped from our original starting voltage because we're pulling more current from the power supply and it's doing its best to keep up. 
we can ramp up to 15 volts or 15 amps, excuse me. And again, you see our voltage drops a little bit more. And if I want to go to 20, I can hit 20. And there we go. Now, you'll notice the screen here <laughs> says some insane value of wattage. That is not updating properly. If you look down here, we're pulling 245 watts of power. Volts times amps equals watts. So, and we're not, we don't need to keep doing that. And I get tired of hearing the fan. So it keeps all the parameters as you go. And some of this is screen refresh. And I think this thing doesn't like being windowed down so I could get it on the screen here. But that's what that test does. That works perfectly fine. The other test that we're going to do is a battery test. So let me pause this and grab a battery and we'll plug it in and run it through its paces. Okay, so I have a Mieti battery hooked up here to our load. This is a 16 amp hour LifePo battery that I've used previously in a bunch of things. And I know the battery works fine. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn off constant current. Actually, we're gonna disconnect. Not disconnect, we're gonna turn off our testing. We're gonna to flip to the battery test. That changes us over here to these parameters for battery test. We're gonna set our conditions and I'm gonna bring up that menu so we can look at it. And I, I don't understand this exactly yet. There's I1, I2, and I3, which is our current draw one, two, and three. I think this is used for the list tests. We're not doing a list test, so it's gonna take the first value and that's the one it's gonna use. So we can set this for, let's set this for five amps. And we're gonna set our cutoff voltage at 11 volts. We'll leave it right there. Actually, let's set that to 11.5. And tell it okay. And then that should have updated our test parameters right here. And you can see this is the I1 parameters, I2 and I3. We're only gonna be using I1. We click that. And we've told the battery test we're going to do constant current on a battery test. We click that to send those parameters to the test device. And then we turn it on. And as you can see on the screen, and let's send that, and then let's turn our test back on. On. Yep, that was it. It was using one of those other parameters. And I keep clicking this and it turns itself off. Oh, yeah, the voltage in this battery is already too low. So let's change that to, I don't really want to, I'll change it to 10. The BMS should save me if it gets stupid and then turn it on. Yeah, so what's happening is that cutoff voltage was going below 11 and a half and it was shutting off the, shutting off the test like it was supposed to. So you can see we're running, we're running five amps and we're creating a discharge curve. Now, the one thing I've seen about this software is that this graph, as you can see over here on the left, auto scales. So here is our amperage. And instead of a nice flat line on a scale of one to 10, you see this up and down because this thing auto scales as it goes. So you get this super, super zoomed in view, kind of dumb. Uh, over here on the voltage curve, you see the same kind of thing because it's auto scaling as it goes. And I haven't found a way to turn that off. There may be, but I haven't seen it. Now, theoretically, it's saving this as a text file. And then I can load that text file into his graph or pull it into something like Excel and graph the time and discharge curve. Now, obviously, for the purposes of the video, we're not going to sit here for hours while this thing discharges. I'm going to let it run a little bit and we'll see if we can get our test data and pull it up in graph form. All right, I've let this run a little bit and I have some previous files so we can take a look at those. But this will run and shows us our total discharge and the time of our test that's elapsed. Turn this off, it is. And let's go look at our graph and that is on a huge screen. So this is the, the one of the tests I did. You can load multiple files. And you can see the curves are different. And none of these tests, none of these tests ran for very long.
so it shows the the red line is our voltage and then the purple line is our current draw and you can see where i started it at five amps and it dropped it down to two and then brought it back up to five kind of thing and then you can see our voltage drop the graphing is you know somewhat rudimentary the data is in a text file so you could actually pull this into excel and and see it on a better screen we can turn off the grid lines which helps somewhat and that lets us see our values well enough that way honestly and then we can download this and save it as a png file that covers most of what this device will do and what i bought it for i have a link an amazon affiliate link it doesn't cost you any more. It helps the channel out. We get a little money back from Amazon if you decide to buy one. So there's an affiliate link below. This review was not sponsored by East Tester. I bought this directly. The device is decent. It does what it needs to do. The software is not stellar, but functional. Um, you know, like a lot of ham related software, this stuff looks like it was made in the late 90s and hasn't been touched since. However, once you get the COM ports, situation the driver situation figured out it it's it worked fine i bought it primarily to do battery tests and power supply testing um, there's no easy way when you're testing a power supply to put a load on the power supply yes you could put your very expensive radio on the power supply but if something goes awry that could end up trashing your radio now the solution to that is twofold this is tom apolinux minibar uh, from ham radio a to z and wa2 ivd and i did i've done a review on this before and this i would put in line at least and this will protect you from over voltage and over current you have a fuse and then if it over volts i think it cuts off at 15 or 16 volts the scr will fire and this will shut off your power but i still wouldn't want to test with my hf radio for example so when you're doing something like that, it helps to have a load that you can adjust and that if it something happens, um, I won't cry too long over it. If it smoked an ICOM or a Flex or a Yesu, there would be a lot of tears. So that's kind of the purpose of this thing, plus which we can adjust the load. It's not a full on or full off thing. I don't have to transmit to use this load. I can set the load, as you saw, to any current level, which is really cool. And of course, if you do a constant voltage test, you can also adjust voltage and do other things with it. If you have a circuit you're testing and you need a load, you could use this for that as well. Guys, that is all I've got in this video. If you would give me a thumbs up, please subscribe to the channel. My statistics show that a whole lot of you guys aren't subscribed, yet you watch the videos. Click that little subscribe button. It'll make you happy. It'll help out the channel because it'll help share the channel to other people potentially. And make sure you click the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new videos. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. 73.